Hi and welcome back to a new video. We often feature obscure cooling solutions on this channel. Usually they're quite old, like retro stuff. That's why I was very surprised finding this 300 euro expensive air cooling unit at Case King, which I immediately ordered so we can feature this on this channel. Doesn't really look special. Let's see why this is so expensive. Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe, operating hundreds of thousands of servers. Hetzner is especially known for their innovative server designs, which allow both a very high performance and affordable pricing at the same time. They run their own cutting edge data centers in Nuremberg and Falkenstein, Germany, and in Helsinki, Finland. With their dedicated server AX52, which is based on Zen 4 architecture, you get the perfect all rounder for a wide range of multi threading intense workloads. And in case you have a smaller budget but still want a very powerful machine for less money, then I would advise to go and check out their server auction. There you can find affordable dedicated servers with reused hardware. Click on the link below to find out more about Hetzner. The reason why this thing is probably so expensive has to be the display that sits on top here. It's pretty big, but apart from that, I mean, this just looks like a very normal dual tower air cooler with two 120mm fans. The question is, how good is this display? And how easy is it to use? Is it convenient? Does it look good? Those are things I want to find out. First of all, I will try to get a reference value for cooling because we also want to check how good this thing cools. This is why I will first mount a system with a Be Quiet air cooler. I now mounted this Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 inside this test system, which is running a 7950X stock. Also, the fan speed is currently locked at 1300 RPM. I had to slightly adjust the right fan in the height because it was colliding with the memory dims. It's also quite tight with the wire view on the bottom, but so far it seems to be good. And this will be our comparison system. In Cinebench R23, we have a package power draw of 235 watt, which is also what the cooler currently has to dissipate. But as we know it from AMD CPU, it still peaks out at 95 degrees Celsius. And if we scroll up, we can see a clock of like 5050 to 5075 megahertz on the 7950X and the score is 37,400 points. In the gaming scenario, after heating up for 15 minutes, we can see 73 to 74 degrees Celsius and the clock is changing from somewhere of 5,350 to 5,400 megahertz. I didn't even mount the cooler yet and I already have to complain. Originally, I had these modules in the system, which fair enough are quite high. So these were colliding, then I thought, okay, maybe let's try the Lexar modules, which are a little bit lower, still colliding, okay. Then I thought, maybe let's move over to those Corsair Ventions modules, which have no RGB and nothing, almost standard height. And now the fan still sits on top of the dim. Yeah. And that is because it is not possible to adjust the height of the fan. So I think I will be able to mount it, but the, yeah, the memory stick will just make contact with here a little bit. It should be okay, but it's not going to be nice. There's one more thing I have to complain about. And I mean, I mounted a ton of air coolers in my life, so I should still be able to mount this, even though there is no manual included. So I thought, okay, maybe let's just go to the Lamtron website and check out the manual. And then this happened. I think it's just like the Be Quiet cooler. So we start with this piece of plastic that goes on first. And then we put these pieces of metal on there and just uh, tighten them with a screw. And now I think I have to remove these screws to somehow remove the display. Otherwise, we won't be able to fix it. Okay. This just looks like all the other Lamptron or Lamptron, not sure monitor, hardware monitor, display, sensor things that you can buy. Just looks exactly the same with an additional aluminum frame. And there are also some LEDs underneath. There probably have to be some wires going down there. Otherwise, I'm not sure how those would be connected. It's actually pretty funny. Like once you remove the screen and like the mid fan, this is like, it just lo looks like an ordinary six heat pipe, average dual tower heatsink. I don't know, there are like other coolers out there that probably cost, I don't know, like $60 maybe. I'm almost done mounting the cooler. I'm a little bit worried when it comes to the fan because it's sitting directly on the memory module and I could see that the fan was pushed like two millimeter upwards. So I hope there will still be enough clearance for the display. By the way, it is completely terrible, absolutely annoying that 
I mean, you're supposed to have this clamp thing, like this tiny piece of metal to, yeah, to clamp the fan to the left, but at the same time there's like zero clearance, and if you don't pull it to the left, then it will always get stuck in the heatsink directly. That is really, did any one of Lamtron ever mount this cooler himself? By the way, this will probably just be detected as a second monitor. It just looks like an HDMI monitor. So we have an HDMI cable to connect it to the graphics card. And then I'm a bit confused because we have, we have two USB cables. They both have the same connectors. One is white, one is black. Why are there two included? Hmm. Another obscure thing is that in the heatsink, there are actually four holes for screws to mount the display. Whereas you can see there are only three right here. And I mean, you could see in the earlier footage that there is another hole in here. Yeah, and now it's like, this is tight on the fan and there's like a gap in here. So it's like a little bit, yeah, not straight. Did they forget to put the fourth hole in the aluminum part of the display? That's the only, yeah. The <laughs> only solution or explanation I would have for that. That makes zero sense. One more thing. Why is the HDMI cable not black? That's already one thing I yeah cannot understand. And angled connectors would have been nice. System is running and as you might have noticed, it's just detected as a second screen. The screen has a resolution of 1080p, which is actually quite nice. But yeah, it's just detected as a second display right now. I just noticed uh, there is a USB drive included and this one also includes the manual. So yeah, could have checked that before, but I didn't expect the manual to be on a USB drive as a PDF file. Well, I mean, it wouldn't have changed much. It's German, but it basically says error loading the PDF document. So it's corrupted. For a second, I thought the USB drive is maybe corrupted because there's like nothing I can open. But this is just about the Lamtron files, like, uh, you know, instructions, everything doesn't work. But if I go to the third party files, like the ROG files, for example, the videos I can open. So everything else seems to be okay, except for all the kind of important Lamtron files. <laughs> To use the sensor panel, we have to run ADA64, run the sensor panel and do the modifications or adjustments here. Also make sure that you set it to the correct screen size with 1080p. Now clicking on sensor panel in ADA64 will reveal the stock panel configuration. So that's just blank stock. And now we can enter the sensor panel manager and then also import a preset which is also included on the USB drive. And there you go to the sensor panel folder and here you have the presets like ASUS, Cyberpunk. I think we'll just load the ASUS one. Hmm. This is, this is weird. I just loaded one of the other presets and something seems to be bugged. I'm not sure if this is ADA64 or I'm not sure, but I mean the background is there, but like all the values displayed seem to be off. No clue. Something seems to be wrong with all of these presets. There is one thing, one workaround I found over Google. So if I go to preferences with ADA64 and then compatibility and then high DPI settings, then I checked this box and set it to system. And this seemed to help to fix the scaling issue. As you can see, for some reason, it's still too big. Like this is not 1080p resolution, but at least the text now fits this theme. Now I just have to figure out how to fix the, yeah, this is like 25% too big. Hmm. I'm just wondering because, you know, my gigabyte monitor is detected as intended, but this one seems to be an issue with the resolution maybe. Well, uh, this happens if I manually adjust the resolution to 1080p. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is how it should look like, but uh, probably not. So this is if I set it to 1440p resolution, but you can see like the sensor panel with 1080p setting. This is so strange with 1080p setting, it doesn't fit. But as you can see in Windows, I set this to 1440p resolution, something, something is completely off here. I just realized one more thing and it completely blows my mind. Do you remember that once we removed the display, there was RGB underneath? Why? I mean, maybe th that's the only thing I can maybe see from RGB, but it could also be the fan. 
the RGB makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. Like zero. Because everything from the RGB is fully covered by the display. Why the hell is it on there? At this point, I mean, I just spent over two hours trying to fix the, yeah, the screen with the sensor panel layout and everything, but I just cannot get it to work. I tried every workaround I could find on ADA64 website when it comes to the scaling issue, but nothing perfectly seems to fix it. And I'm still not sure why the display is detected as 1440p and if I change it to 1080p or any other resolution, any other refresh rate, it just completely goes nuts the way you could see it. And yeah, not, not sure what is causing this. It seems to be completely random. And at that point, honestly, I'm a little bit fed up, especially considering that this product costs 300 euro. And I mean, of course, it's like a mixture of, I'm not sure the display maybe, and some software issue. It's surely some software setting issue, but that is exactly the reason why I like the Wichi Dash from G-Skill. That's when I, when I told you about the external monitor thing, that I hate external monitor sensor displays that are connected over HDMI. This is exactly why. Because if you have one that's detected like the Wichi Dash with USB-C and it's not detected as a monitor, you don't have any of those problems. So I think let's just move over and uh, finally check the performance of the cooler. But yeah, I don't see that I can fix the, the screen. Honestly, I'm a little bit sad and it's also a pity kind of, you know, if I just look at this like this, I also kind of like it. It's, it's kind of cool to have a display with this size and like hardware information on an air cooler. I still like the idea. I think it looks pretty awesome. Just, you know, with the cables on top and having this as HDMI and then having those issues is really annoying. But I think generally, if you would execute this idea properly, then I think this would be quite nice. So first thing, Cinebench. Package power draw is similar. It's slightly lower by like, I don't know, like five to 10 watt, but overall looks okay. Temperature look okay. And also clocks. Yes, it looks like the same clock, like 5,050, 5,100. And also the score, 37,700. It's basically the same as with the Be Quiet cooler. Interestingly, in the gaming scenario, it's not even that bad. We are about five degrees Celsius ahead of the Be Quiet cooler with about 68 to 69. That's not even too bad. Let's get to the conclusion of this thing, which is, uh, yeah, it's going to be a long conclusion. First of all, I like the idea of having such a huge display on an air cooler. I think it looks, looks actually quite nice. And it also has its benefits because those sensor panel displays have been around for a long time. But usually you are required to do some kind of yeah, modifications, some kind of adjustments and things yourself to somehow manage to fit it into your system. So having this on an air cooler is probably a very easy and also perfect position to look at this. At the same time, it's also nothing really new because that's something that is very common nowadays on AIOs and also custom water block, for example, from Corsair. And those solutions have a much better integration when it comes to software. They might be a little bit limited in what you can display versus such a huge monitor right here where you can customize everything. You can display a huge amount of information with ADA64. That is something really cool versus, for example, IQ and a smaller display. But it is a lot more work and potentially, as you could see, a lot more buggy. The cooling performance is also not too bad, but it's also on a level of like a 60 to maybe $70 air cooler. And if you keep that in mind, you have a display that costs like $100 to $120 and you have an air cooler that costs like $60 to $70. So you could buy both separately for under $200 and this is like $300. So that alone doesn't really make a lot of sense. And then there are the downsides. Let's first of all talk about the mounting because that's something I didn't really cover in the video itself. But when I mounted the AM5 mounting plates, they are very loose and have high tolerances. So when I originally tried to mount the air cooler, it wouldn't fit on the screws. So I had to play around with the tolerances of those metal sheets and like push them upwards and downwards to find a position where the screws of the cooler actually fit. So that alone took me like five minutes to figure out. So that's not really convenient. The way the fans are connected, clamped on with those small arms is something you can do, but there is no clearance in the center fan, which makes it really inconvenient to remove and put back the fan. Also the right one, that one that sits above the memory, is completely limiting what kind of memory you can use. Like the Vengeance kit I have is probably the max you can do. 
but I think theoretically you would have to use a memory without any kind of heatsink, which then drastically limits the amount of memory kits and also the performance you can get for the memory kits available. Then there is the entire cable thing, like there's different cables included, which doesn't really make sense. And you have a white USB, you have a black USB, you have a gray HDMI. Why are the cables not angled? And like, you know, with this, that you have to route the cables through externally is also not convenient. You could also have an internal USB 2.0 header that would do the trick. But yeah, all of these things, not really nice. There was no manual included in my unit, which is something that can happen. It's usually not too bad. You go to the manufacturer's website, which I couldn't reach for whatever reason. Then there is the manual supposed to be on the USB drive where all the files are corrupted. I also double checked it on a different system and I also cannot open it there. So it is the USB drive or the files themselves. In the end, the main feature of this cooler is the display. And it also has a ton of problems. Starting off with that I cannot set the right resolution for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, but you could see if I lower the resolution to anything, like even 720p or whatever, it always bugs out. Not sure why this is the case. And also with the scaling issue with ADA64, where I'm not sure if it's a software issue of uh, ADA64, but this also potentially means that this could be a problem you run into at home. So this is a problem that could be expected and then it's just annoying versus for example, like with the G-Skill Vigidash where it's like a USB device, you wouldn't run into all those um, adjustment uh, things with the display. So that is something, yeah, it's just full of problems. And in the end, I mean, what I still find funny is that underneath the cover you have RGB, which you will never be able to see. That just fully sums it up. I can just say it's it's an interesting idea with a very poor execution and I just absolutely cannot recommend to buy this cooler. It's absolutely terrible. There's so many, so many issues with this product. And then 300 euro, that's an, it's just an absolute joke. Don't buy this. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye bye.